Ma'am, do not put your number in there. Don't put your number. Which number? It's asking for a PIN code. What's the PIN code? No, you put the wrong number in. Let it cancel. If you haven't lost money in a crypto scam, you may have to thank Kit Boga, the worst nightmare for online scammers. For years, Kit Boga has been keeping fraudsters on the line, wasting their time and exposing their tricks. Recently, he joined forces with crypto exchange Kraken to help recover stolen funds. In this interview, Kit Boga uncovers the secrets of scam baiting, the art of outsmarting scammers. He also shares some essential tips on how to keep your money safe from crypto scams. I'm Giovanni, let's get into it. How did you come to this activity? Why did you decide to go after scammers like that? Yeah. Yeah, good question. So scam baiting for me has evolved a bit over the years too. It started off as just a way to distract scammers. I thought if I could spend 10 minutes on the phone, that was 10 minutes that the scammer wasn't targeting someone's grandma. So today just go and get $2,000 gift card. Okay. Well, and I mean, if time, it's going to be next week, it. I'm meeting you. I'll, you know, I'll get it done before next mm, week. Not now. No, no, no. Now, now, now. So my, my grandma had dementia and my grandfather had Alzheimer's and they just were targeted by a lot of different people. And as soon as about seven years ago, I heard about these tech support scammers that would call and say your computer had viruses and want to connect to your computer to clean it. And I knew immediately that um, my grandparents would fall for something like this if, if, if they got that phone call. So it started off as just, gosh, if I could distract them, um, maybe that would help solve the problem. And I quickly realized that if I wanted to educate more or I wanted to get more involved, um, that a great way to do it could be making videos. I have to give you the number. That's what I yeah. told you. That's the... It's asking for a PIN code. What's the PIN no, code? No, you put the wrong number in. Let it cancel. Ma'am, do not insert the cash. Do not do it. In one hand, it's supposed to be fun. And on the other hand, it's a deep dive into exactly what the scammers say, exactly how the script works, and what would happen if you were to fall victim to it. A lot of the psychological techniques that scammers use to take yeah. victims' money is are the same techniques that you use against them. Can you maybe give us uh, an example of that? One of the common things that every scammer does, just about every scammer anyway, is they will try to give you a sense of urgency. Like if you don't accept the money that you're winning right now, you're going to lose it. I, I like to say whether you think you've won a million dollars or you think you owe a million dollars to the police or something, the scammer is going to make you do something right now. Don't hang up the phone. And so often when I'm doing this and uh, the scammers think I'm a good target, I will use that same technique against them. This can't be. Ma'am. I gotta call Mom, my grandson. I gotta call my grandson. I gotta call my grandson. I have to call my grandson. I have to call my grandson. I have to call my grandson. I'll be right back. Hold on. I gotta call my grandson. I have to call. I have to call him right now. Hold on. And I just use that subtle technique of you're not going to be able to scam me unless you do this right now because I have to go, which is exactly what they do to to me. When you started uh, your activity, I guess back in 2017, if I'm not uh, mm -hmm. mistaken, uh, yep. you started uh, mostly covering, mostly dealing with uh, uh, tax support scams. Uh, did you notice an evolution of uh, how the scam works in the years? I could probably call someone today that would use almost the same script that they did in 2017. That's a tech support scam. But one big thing I've noticed that they've expanded on or changed is that they will, they've gotten really good at impersonating and uh, like spoofing phone numbers. So one example is, let's say you let them connect to your computer because you think there's viruses. Well, they'll go into your browser history and find out that you bank at a particular bank or instant financial institution. And then they're going to call you spoofing that bank's 1-800 number or like their, their customer service number. So you get a call from your phone that looks like Bank of America or, or whatever it is. And they'll pretend to be your bank now. 
Yeah, two hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars in the checking and your savings, or is that all total? I'm so, sure I might have misunderstood you. You're asking how much money did I want in my bank, or how much is in the bank? How much is in the bank? Are your available balance? Oh, uh, so they'll tell you that there's a problem on your bank, or they will figure out where you're located based on your IP address, and they'll call you from the local sheriff's department and or police and say. Uh, you've been implicated in some crime. Same with even in the crypto space, they'll figure out that you have a, a an account at a particular exchange, and then they might start trying to spoof a 1-800 number or spoof customer service. When, when you started uh, this activity, crypto was not that popular for sure. Can you tell us your perception of how big of a problem crypto has become in terms of uh, facilitating these sort of scams? Yeah, you know, that's... The other major shift I've sh seen over the years has been um, how the scammers want to take your money. So it started with credit cards, and and then they started losing the ability to process your credit cards. Uh, it was much more difficult for them to either get a legitimate company here in the U.S. to work with them, or credit card providers started cracking down on all of that. So they shifted to gift cards. Click on cancel, cancel. $500 and add it to your bill. Oh, okay. Awesome. You need to place the answer. You're not listening to me. But then it became impossible to buy $1,000 and $500 gift cards. So they had to tell you to go buy, right, 20 or 50 $100 cards or something. It, it becomes tricky. So they moved to bank accounts and wire fraud. But then within the past couple of years, they've shifted pretty heavily into crypto. I've definitely seen a big increase uh, when you talk about the investment scams or something like pig butchering. I think a lot of people have heard this term. It's almost exclusively through something like uh, USDT or or Ethereum. Like they, there's some kind of crypto attached to this. For example, these scammers are trying to steal every last penny that you have. So how could they feasibly do that with um, gift cards? It's just not, it's completely impractical for them to, to do that. Are you saying that right now it's difficult or maybe impossible for a scammer to steal like the life savings of a person, if not through crypto? What is the difficulty for, for a scammer to like make a person sure. release some bank information and then, and then get the money? <laughs> sure. to what and and they, definitely, they definitely do that, but what scammers are having a harder time doing now is uh, getting bank accounts here in the, let's say you're targeting someone in the US and you want to wire, you want them to wire $300,000, like their life savings. Well, if you're wiring it overseas, that's going to be a big red flag to, to like the bank fraud world. So it's becoming a lot, it's a lot harder for them to get accounts that are compromised here in the US to be able to launder money, uh, that way. Another big thing with crypto that I was just talking to a buddy about is we've seen a lot of stories because it's becoming more popular, like you brought up. When I first started in 2017, it wasn't as popular, let's say. There are so many legitimate stories of somebody getting involved in crypto and making money uh, or or it being a investment opportunity. Hello. Oh my Can God. you hear me? Oh my God. What happened, man? Are you very, very rich? Oh my God. Let oh my see, God. Let me see. Let me see. No, no, this is, this has to be, this has to be a joke. This can't be real. One, is it one million dollars? You hear stories on, uh, I mean, I'm on Reddit and Twitter a lot, let's say. So you hear overnight stories on Reddit or someone gets involved in the right NFT project or gets involved in the right coin when it first. And so you hear these success stories and then scammers, I think, are able to just use that to to further manipulate you. Yeah, that definitely the potential returns that cryptocurrency offer is probably playing a huge role in making mm -hmm. them a very um, attractive uh, tool yeah. for, for scammers to manipulate people. Many times the scammer you talk to at the phone or you chat with is uh, himself uh, actually a victim of uh, a bigger scheme where people even 
get sort of exploited. There is like exploitation involved, large uh, offices where people are forced to work and uh, scamming people uh, all day long. Maybe yes. it would be more useful to go after the organization behind it than the mm -hmm. single person that is himself a victim. What do you think about that? Yeah, th thank you for bringing that up. So one reason that I, I really haven't covered much investment scheme type pig butcher and content on my YouTube channel, particularly for that reason. So the tech support scammer that's pretending to be Microsoft, uh, to my knowledge and to my, you know, the best research that I have is not being held against their will and forced to pretend it to be Microsoft. Like a lot, the videos that you'll see on my YouTube channel, uh, I think for the most part, if not every single one of them have chosen to uh, become scammers. Let's talk about the possibility of retrieving funds uh, after you get scammed. I know that you have started a, a partnership you mentioned with Kraken a couple of years ago, where you are collaborating with their uh, security team and uh, you sort of uh, created a, a system, a strategy that allows you to retrieve funds in some way. Can you uh, guide us briefly through that system? Yeah, that I you... can talk about it a little bit. I think there's certain things I'm not supposed to share. Um, what you might be referring to is we, I built a fake, uh, for folks in the security world, it would be called a honeypot. Uh, essentially, it's a fake Bitcoin exchange. The scammers think that I'm sending money to them, um, but it's all fake. It, it it looks real. They sign up for an account. They see that they're trying to claim this Bitcoin, and then they have to go through a bunch of steps, and I ask a lot of information about them. And what tends to happen when you're a scam baiter or when you're working with a scammer as a victim, I shouldn't say working, but they will give you a brand new wallet for every single person that they are trying to scam as a way to try to obfuscate what's going on. Well, with this honeypot, the scammer thinks that they're working with a legitimate place. And I always tell them the first time they put in a wallet, I always tell them it failed so that, so they'll generate, so they'll give me a different wallet. Wait a second. Dumbass, call them right away. Wait, wait, call wait, them wait, right wait now second. and tell them that was not the right so address. Are, uh, uh, are you, you don't have it? Who has it? Call them. Where, that is what where, I'm saying. Call where, them right now. Where did it and go, Joe? It's not right address. I, three times I give it to you. The right address. Still, you mentioned it wrong. Where, where the heck did that money go, Joe? It's $450,000. Call them. And what we find is they give us wallets that have a lot of history to them. Wallets that they've been using to funnel all of their funds to. And that's particularly interesting uh, for someone who's doing security research or like analysis on, on these sorts of uh, frauds. Um, so that's where Kraken comes in, right? If I can collect the right Bitcoin wallet, I can hand it off to their fraud team and they're able to start looking at what's happening. Are they taking all of the victim funds and moving it to some legitimate exchange that they have uh, a relationship with. So there's been times where we've been able to freeze assets and start to work with authorities to explain what's going on. Ultimately, I'm manipulating the scammers to give me those wallets. Sometimes it's where they'll have to call customer service of my fake platform and I answer. I do have great news. We were able to transfer that full balance to the uh, Bitcoin wallet that you Man, gave us. But you have, uh, you have, but it you looks have like it was successful. What I'm oh my God. What was that? Ma'am, you have the wrong wallet. I'm trying to tell you, you have the wrong wallet. I was trying to tell you that earlier. I pretended to be customer service and I'll tell them something like, well, the only way we can get you your funds quickly is if you have a verified Kraken account. We partner with Kraken. And funny enough, some of these scammers are foolish enough to then go to Kraken, go through the KYC process, upload their passport, let's say, like do all this stuff. I wanted to get more of a sense of who the average scammer is. You have been talking mm -hmm. to thousands of them uh, over the years. Can you maybe draw a portrait of the average scammer? Yeah, well, it's, it's tough because I tend to think about 
a scammer having two different sides. Like there's the there's the persona that that we see um, as the potential victim, and then there's who they actually are as a person. I I don't know if I could who they actually are uh, might be tough. I would just be taking guesses. I and mean, I've, I've had some real conversations, like heart to heart conversations with scammers or ex scammers. And I get the sense a lot of them tend to be younger. A lot of them are uh, in countries where they just don't have as many opportunities as, as maybe uh, we do. Um, but the persona that they portray has a lot of commonality. Like typically uh, it's someone um, who's, who's attractive, who has a lot of money. A lot of scammers will just pretend to be uh, someone of power or someone of importance. Don't Who talk. am I talking to again? Sorry, and I don't you want you to just talk. Just like that other guy. I'm just a little... President of the United States. And this is the second time I'm repeating yeah. myself that I don't okay. like. Sorry. Fourth thing, go to the bank again right now. So if they call you, they're not going to say, hi, Sometimes they do, but they don't tend to say, hi, I'm from Microsoft. It'll be like the senior customer service, uh, the chief security officer, the, um, hi, I'm the, what would you say? Like, uh, I'm the owner of whatever. They, they typically aren't just a random employee. They want you to think that there's someone really important. And so just a final question related to our audience. Could you give us uh, a couple more tips on what they should look out for in terms yeah. of red flags. I'm sure you've heard before that you should do things like have two-factor authentication or use a YubiKey or something like that. If if you're hearing it again today and you still have not done that, that's just like a, you really need to do it, right? For things like crypto, I think a trend that I've seen is it's really easy to get caught up in the speed in which everything is happening and moving very quickly. And that can lead to some mistakes. So I usually recommend like trying to slow down. I know that's really hard, but like doing your due diligence, double checking, like who is this person that I'm talking to? Look at all the fine details. You know, the other day uh, we were looking at a website that was a carbon copy of a really popular coin. And the only difference on the entire website was the domain, instead of it being like a L, it was a I or something, or something really subtle that you could barely notice. And uh, I, I didn't see it for like 15 minutes, but everything else was exactly the same. So sometimes you just have to do your due diligence. The other way to protect against that, if just due diligence isn't enough, is to really segment your life and your funds. So like have a wallet that you, that you're, with a, with a little bit of crypto. And so if you want to try something out or test something out, or you're interested in minting something, don't store all of your assets in the same place, because if it does happen to be a malicious, uh, like some kind of drainer or something like that. And I think these are probably common things that most people have heard before, but I would say it again. And if you, if, if you're not following these practices, perhaps today is the day that you say, all right, I'll finally do it. Uh, I guess the seg segmenting is the key word here for people that are watching, having different devices and separating also wallets where you keep your yeah. money so that it's not uh, everything in one spot makes mm -hmm. it uh, harder for, for scammers. So yeah, Kit, thanks a lot for joining our show. Yeah. It was an incredibly interesting conversation. And mm -hmm. uh, I will recommend our audience also to check out your, your YouTube channel, which is great. Thank and you. hopefully we can continue our cooperation. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys ever have anything interesting that comes through that you're interested in investigating with me, let me know because uh, I'd love to check it out.